Have you ever had one of those days? Well, let me tell you, that was me yesterday. And most of it was my own fault. I spent most of the day Friday creating a new question and answer video because in my head, I thought my next upload was going to be the first upload for the month of November. Once I finished editing that video, I looked at the calendar and realized there's another Monday in October. So at that point I went, I've got to come up with another video now. I decided to finish out the geometric shape series with the cube because in my head I thought I wouldn't spend a lot of time on this and it would be relatively easy to edit. Then it went downhill from there. Part of the problem is I was trying to rush it. I was literally pressed for time. I need to get back to my paying jobs. So I was just pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. I really wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. It was not a good method of teaching the way that I started this out. And I apologize for that in advance. What happened, part of what happened, is I used a color that I had never sprayed before. This is the Createx Illustration Colors 5012 Berlin Airbrush Frog Juice. It's a green, obviously. It's a very light shade of green. It's almost an apple green. It's kind of a yellow green. And I really like the color. The problem is the value is so light that when I had it next to these other shapes that we previously painted, it just didn't look right to my eyes. It was too light. What you're seeing now is not this color straight out of the bottle. This was actually a little bit of black mixed into it because I had to repair some stupid mistakes. And it also needed to be a little bit darker in order to look correct next to these other shapes, in my opinion. So I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing. I wasn't controlling my overspray. It kind of got out of control. You'll see the shadow was a disaster when I did that the first time. And I was really hammering on the paint because this is such a light value. It is a transparent. So with each subsequent coat, the color will get darker, but it takes a lot of coats to get this color to go pretty dark. And I was hammering it on. I wasn't working in light layers like I should and like I preach all the time and then drying those layers in between. I was literally putting the paint on heavily and it started soaking into the paper and trying to buckle and curl, which caused me some other issues. There's, there's some mistakes in this video. And then eventually I slow myself down and go in and try to repair what I screwed up. And you'll see all of that shortly. As far as laying out the shape, I will put the shape up on the screen so that you can take a screenshot if you would like and try to paint the same thing. This one is, the process is the same as what we've done previously. The biggest difference is now we're adding more stencils. I have four in total. We have the top of the cube, the highlight side of the cube, and the shadowed side of the cube. And then the last one is just the full cube so that you can work on the shadow. This color was mixed two to one with 4011 reducer. So two parts paint to one part 4011 reducer. I was using my Iwata HPCS Eclipse airbrush with a 0.35 millimeter needle and nozzle set. My air pressure was only set at around 10 maybe 12 PSI while I was doing this because I've been doing detail work on paying jobs and I was too lazy to change it. I would rather, most of the time, I would rather be around the 20 PSI range for this particular project. So without further ado, let's just jump into this disaster. I already have the first mask applied and taped onto our paper canvas very similar to what we did previously. And again, very similar to what we did previously, I'm going to line up the second mask. Like we did before. I'm trying to get these as close to lined up.
as perfectly as I can. That's pretty close right there. Not exact. I think I can get it a little bit closer. That's better. I'm going to hinge the bottom side of this mask very similar to what we did with the cylinder. But now we have a third mask because we have three sides of this cube that will be visible. So at this point, I'm going to hinge the top one up, allow the bottom one to hinge down and then I'm going to try to line up the top just like we did the bottom. And take your time with this. Again, the more time you take, the more exact you have these lined up, the better your project will be in the end. For this one, I'm going to hinge it on the side. It doesn't matter which side you hinge it off of. I'm going to use three pieces of tape just to make sure it stays where I want it. And then once again, I can hinge that one up. I can pull that one off to the side. I might stick a piece of tape right there just to keep it out of the way while we begin painting this side. I've decided to use a little bit different color on this cube. This is Createx Illustration Frog Juice Green. This will be the first time I've actually sprayed it. So this side of our cube is in shadow. So it's going to be a little bit darker compared to the other two. Remember to try and control your mask as it's being blown around from the air coming out of the airbrush. Use your air to dry the paint. This is a pretty light color. So to get it to full saturation, it's gonna take a few coats. And I forgot already to leave a little bit of a lighter value down here in this corner for that secondary reflected highlight. Building this color up, I should probably be building it up a little bit slower and putting it on relatively heavy. So now I'm having to use air to dry the paint in between. A darker color probably would have been a better choice for this particular project. I'm 
if you can see, the paper is really absorbing all of this paint because I'm putting it on heavily and it's starting to try and buckle on me. Flip this up and see what we have. That's probably good enough for what we're trying to do. Let me grab another piece of tape so I can hinge this up and keep it out of our way. And then we can bring up the opposite side. This side is going to be a little bit lighter. I want to cover the surface, but I'm not going to go to full saturation like we did on the first side. I want to make sure the edges are defined against the white background. But this is the highlight side. This is the side that the light is hitting. So I might add a few little streaks. And it will be a little bit darker toward this edge. the air to dry that and then we can drop it down and see how that looks not bad let's hinge the top of it over same thing the highlight is on the left side so I want it to be darker on the right and I want the top edge to be the darkest portion. A little bit of color on the left side just to distinguish that edge. I want to keep the top on the right side darker. Because if we make this edge the same value as this side, then you're going to lose that edge. Filling in the center of it just a little bit. Maybe a little bit darker right along that edge. on the left side. Have a look. That looks pretty good. See how you have that really nice defined edge with a darker area on the top, lighter area on the side. Same thing on this side. It's darker on the side and darker on that back edge. Might darken this up just a little bit so that I don't have that harsh fade coming off of it. Put the tape back on this to hold it over. You might notice this edge right here, my alignment was slightly off. But you can use a pair of freehand shields or even some tape if you want to kind of clean that edge up. So I'll line these. We'll spray a little bit more color in there.
using the air to dry what I just sprayed. And I was slightly blending that off toward the left. So now I don't have that white spot there. It's slightly darker on the top, which actually works out well because it's a little bit lighter on that corner here. At this point in the project, it actually looks just fine. I actually liked the separation values that I had on all of the corners better with the lighter version than I do compared to the final version. The reason it got darker is because of the repairs that are coming. And that's one of those things when you have to repair something, there are usually compromises. There's give and take. Sometimes you have to make decisions based on a repair that maybe won't look quite as good as it did before, but it's better than throwing everything away and starting over. So this is the point where the disaster begins. When I start painting in the shadow underneath, you'll see that I'm really not paying attention. I'm putting the paint on too heavily again. If you noticed earlier, you could really see this paper buckling and curling when I was painting the shadow side, especially. I mentioned at one point that I was using the air to dry that layer of paint. In reality, I wasn't drying all of the paint. It was still very wet. There was so much moisture being absorbed by the paper. The air was drying the very top layer of paint, but there was still a lot of wet paint underneath that top layer. So again, always slow down, take your time, work in lighter layers and use the air to dry those lighter layers as opposed to hammering the paint on. It's really not a good way to paint with water-based paint. Coming back to the shadow, this is the point where I'm really not paying attention. I'm still hammering the paint on. I'm trying to get it dark and that's going to create some issues with, again, application of the paint too heavily and using some freehand shields. I actually put a little bit of an edge in here that we'll talk about shortly. Now, this color being so light was probably not the greatest idea on my part, but at this point we can go ahead and pull the mask on the right side off so that we can create the shadow. And in order to create the shadow, I cut out one mask that is just the entirety of the cube. And this is the same process that we used before. Just spraying a nice fade coming off of your shape. Once again, this being a really light color, it's not going to work extremely well as a shadow. I know you can't see what I'm doing right now. Let's see if this will work a little bit better. I'm just doing basically lines starting on the mask and then bringing the paint off of the mask onto the surface and allowing it to fade out. using the air to dry the paint because once again, I'm putting it on relatively heavy. Lift that to see what it looks like. And it's probably going to work for our purposes here. Again, you can see I've got a little bit of a light colored line there and on the back side. Okay, that was absolutely not going to work for our purposes. At the point I was at, 
the shadow looked terrible. I was rushing again. I was putting the paint on too heavily. I wasn't taking my time and working in light layers and I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing as far as the overspray is concerned. There's a ton of overspray traveling all the way down to where the mask was still taped onto the surface. Not only that, but the shadow was coming down past that bottom corner of the cube. That is not right. That's not correct at all. It's not even close. It's not going to work. We'll come back in and repair that here in a bit, but first I'm going to make a few other mistakes. So using a freehand shield, you want to make sure your paint is dry, which this is not. This is just a demonstration, so I'm not terribly concerned. Kind of realign that and add a little bit more color along this edge. Be careful when you get up here, you don't want a harsh line. Created by your shield. That's not perfectly lined up. Again, this is just a demonstration. You can see I do have a little bit of a harsh edge right there when I had the shield up here. I'm going to try to blend that out, which is going to be difficult with this super light color. What I've just done is very difficult to repair, especially with a transparent paint. Remember, a transparent paint is exactly that. It's transparent. Each subsequent layer of paint that you apply is going to get darker and darker and darker. You don't normally reach a saturation level where the paint just stops and levels out with a true transparent paint. I'll demonstrate. So I've taken the cube stencil that I used for this demonstration and sprayed the bottom corner of the shadow in a very light layer of paint just to make this a little bit more visible. What I just did on the video is I used a freehand shield to align this edge that's going up on the actual painting surface in order to darken up the shadow along that back edge. What I didn't do was pay attention to my overspray and how close I was to the project. Because you can darken up that shadow without putting a harsh line going down below the bottom edge of the cube if you're careful. I wasn't careful. I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to rush through this and I wound up putting a harsh line going down below that corner. like that. And this is exaggerated simply so that I know it'll show up on camera. The problem with trying to repair this particular mistake with the same transparent paint that I'm already using is it is a transparent. I can paint more and more layers over this shadow and I am taking my time and using very light layers using the air to dry it in between. What you'll notice is it is going to get darker and darker and darker with more layers of paint applied. The downside is it's going to remain darker where I have that line.
So hopefully you can see that although this has gotten considerably darker with subsequent layers of paint, you can still clearly see that defined line running along the edge of what would be the back edge of the cube. So the way to actually make that repair is to take your transparent and create an opaque. There are two ways you can do that. You can add white to the color, which is going to make it level out and stop at once it reaches 100% saturation, the downside to that is it's also going to make the color lighter. In this case, I added a couple drops of black to the color to darken it up. And then once I reached a level that was darker than the other greens, it disappeared and you can't notice it. Using air to dry it. Paint a little bit heavy there, it's being pushed around by the air. So here's another little mistake that I've just made. We've already talked several times about how I was applying the paint far too heavily, far too wet, because I was rushing it. And what just happened is I had a lot of wet paint buildup on the surface and I was too close to the surface with the airbrush, the air was actually blowing that wet paint around and it creates a little dark, dark line at the edge of where all that wet paint wound up. And part of the problem was exaggerated because the paper was warping and buckling and trying to curl on me. So there was actually a small indentation in the paper where the air was pushing that paint into that area. Let me demonstrate. So if I came back in on this piece of paper that we just painted and started really putting a lot of this color down, saturating the surface, you can see the paper starting to move around and buckle. That's a lot of wet paint. See how it's getting very splotchy? Now if I was really close with the air, see how I'm blowing that paint around? Now, when I dry this, I'm going to have a very dark line at the edge of where that paint is being blown around. And I have the same problem, trying to cover that back up with a transparent or level it out to make all the areas around that dark line match is not going to work. You're going to have to repair that using an opaque or adding some black to your color. So I talk about this a little bit later in the video, but when you get a large buildup of paint, because it does happen on occasion, and not necessarily on purpose, when you have a large buildup of paint on your surface and you want to use the air to dry it, pull the airbrush back away from the surface so that the air pressure is not hitting the surface as heavily or as close and it doesn't have the opportunity to really push that paint around. So in this case, I could come back, that was probably still a little bit too heavy, but using lighter layers, you will have a better chance at leveling that splotchiness out compared to that super dark line that I created down here. And 
And another quick little tip is that's also a very quick and easy method you can use to create some texture in your painting. Definitely better to work in light layers when you're trying to blend a mistake like this out. Now, because I was in a hurry and impatient, I've actually created more of a mess. Because the paint was so heavy and really got pushed around up here. In reality, being a shadow, this would have some darker value to it. I wouldn't actually shadow with this color. Normally, so that wouldn't be terribly difficult to repair. But I have kind of made a mess of things for this demonstration. Go ahead and remove these masks. Let's see just how much I really screwed this up. Airbrushing is absolutely a game of patience a lot of the time. As you can see, I was impatient and trying to get this finished in order to be able to sit down and go through and edit all of this footage only so that I can get this video uploaded within two days. And I have paid for it. I've got a lot of mistakes here because I was really trying to rush it. That's really where I went wrong. Part of it is the fact that this color is so light. You've really got to pile the color on in order to get it to full saturation. Here's some mistakes. I've got a lot of blow under from my paper stencil right here. And you can see this edge where I had one of the paper stencils that was folded down has all of this paint on the bottom edge of it. My shadow is not really looking very shadowy at all because again, I rushed it. So, Let's take a look at how we can actually repair all of this. The first thing that I want to do is try to get rid of this overspray line where my shield was taped up here. So I'm taking just a regular eraser. We'll see how much of this actually removes simply by erasing the color. Some of it is coming up. Not all of it, but some of it is. 
I'm gonna work this on up. And that's not removing as much as I would like. This is a soft eraser. Let me see if I can find my aggressive eraser, which is just about gone. a little bit better. See if we can get this one removed. That was not. So erasing got me some of the way, but it didn't get me all of the way. I'm still not happy with the bottom side of the shadow. I actually brought the shadow down way too far. It should be starting at the corner of the cube and then coming back. I don't know what I was thinking. It's been a long day. So I'm going to come in with some create text illustration white and try to clean up the bottom side of this. The white is probably not going to match the actual color of the paper all that well, but I'm going to give it a shot. I, we have to be able to repair our mistakes without just wadding it up and throwing it away. So that's what I'm going to try to do is come in with some create text white and kind of clean up this bottom area of the shadow and maybe try to work on the rest of the shadow. We'll just see how it goes. So I can use my shield for the cube to kind of protect the actual cube. I already had this white mixed up and I think if I remember correctly it is very very over reduced not going to cover extremely well like you would normally expect a white to cover. Notice this time I'm using very light layers and drying those layers in between.
This color is too over reduced. So at this point, I'm going to try some Createx Illustration Opaque White straight out of the bottle. Because I'm trying to get nothing more than coverage. at this point. My air pressure currently is set at about 10 psi which is not ideal. Spray this right out of the bottle but uh, all I want to do is clean up the bottom end of this and then we can go from there. Trying to fade this out as it goes down so it's not as noticeable that I came in and repaired it. Obviously this white is not going to be the same white as the paper. All right, so here's what I wound up doing. I added a couple drops of black to my frog green mix or frog juice mix, I apologize. So now I can come back in and try to make this shadow look like it should using the cutout stencil of my cube again working in light layers now I'm not trying to hog the paint on like I did before making sure it's dry before I continue. Keeping the shadow up higher than I did before. At the end of the day, this is just a practice exercise too. It's not like we're trying to create a work of art. But you can practice repairing things when you're practicing too. So at this point, I can take the rest of the shields and do the best I can to line these back up pretty close to where they need to be. I 
and add some of this darker color to the rest of it as well. I want it to be pretty dark along this edge because the left side is going to be in highlight. along the top edge as well. The very top of the cube will be in more light than this side will be. Time I'll try to remember to keep our secondary reflected highlight in the corner. This side is pretty dark comparatively other than that reflected highlight. Because I'm holding this mask rather than having it taped in place, I just moved it. Not intentionally, of course. It's looking a little bit better. I think I need to bring some of this darkness down a little bit. I want that corner to be a little bit brighter, but I didn't want it to carry quite all the way up. That looks better. Make sure this is dry before I put another mask on. Next, I'm going to go with the top. Again, this edge, the back, very back edge. Right here is going to be darker. And we'll gradually get lighter as it goes to the left. The fog some of the color on the other side. And again, I'm getting a little carried away and put that on a little bit heavy. When you get the paint on heavy like that, you're trying to dry it with your airbrush. Keep the airbrush further back. If you get close, you'll start pushing that wet paint around and you'll wind up with a line of paint that dries darker than everything else around it. Very similar to what I did in the shadow a little while ago. If you hold the airbrush back, 
keep the air blowing lightly over it to dry it. We can probably save it. That looks pretty good. I might find the edge right here a little bit more. Last but not least is this highlighted side, which I'm really not going to add very much to this at all. A little bit darker on the very edge. And keep your streaks in. I'm out of paint, which stinks because now I gotta drop this. I'm gonna bring this back in and try to line it up one more time. It's a good idea when you are using masks and stencils like this that you had taped to the surface to not remove them until you're absolutely certain that you're happy with what you did. Lining these up can be a pain. It's not as difficult with a cube shape like this. It's not exactly super easy and I just hit the camera. I apologize for that. The only other thing I think I would do at this point is clean up the edge right here just a little bit. So make it just a touch darker just to make that edge a little bit sharper. Doesn't take very much at all. And that pretty much wraps up this disaster. At the end of the day, I'm happy with how it turned out. And keep in mind, these exercises are designed for just practice. These were never meant to be a finished artwork. This is to refine and hone your skills and improve those artworks when you are working on those. The takeaways from this are sometimes it's a good idea to slow yourself down. Take your time, be patient, especially when it comes to the paint application. This paper has leveled out some, but it's still pretty wrinkly around the cube compared to the rest of the shapes. Pay attention to what you're doing, and when mistakes happen, or if you're just not happy with something that you've created, then stop, take a minute to look at things Come up with a plan on how you can attempt to fix it and give it a shot. It may not always work, but you're going to learn something either way. Some of the methods that I tried weren't that impressive. When it comes to erasing, you can normally erase light overspray relatively easily as long as you've sprayed it recently. I knew from the get-go that I was never going to be able to erase some of the dark paint in the shadowed area. I was going to have to paint over that. And the over-reduced white that I initially tried, I was pretty certain that wasn't going to work, but it was worth a shot because I already had it mixed up. Normally I don't spray the opaque white directly out of the bottle like that. I will usually reduce it, but I didn't want to take the time to mix it up and then allow that to sit and acclimate for five to ten minutes. So once again, I hope you guys got something out of this. It was kind of a mess and it, I wound up spending more time on it than I would have 
had I just slowed down and taken my time for the instructional part of the video like I did with the other three. But I still think it's a good teaching tool and that's why I wanted to share it with all of you. If you did get something out of this, remember to like, subscribe, and share. I will leave links in the description below to all of the products that I used in this video. Until next time, I'm Trevor with Wicked Art Studio. I will see you all then.